going on everybody it's ETA Prime Pack here again today we're going to be putting together a very small form factor gaming slash emulation PC using some of my favorite parts and in fact we're going to have a dedicated GPU with this unit and it's only going to come in at 3.8 liters small. So if you watch the channel you know I love my small form factor builds. With this, like I mentioned, I'm using some of my favorite parts that we've used in other PCs so far, but we're going with the A09 case from Goodysari. This is one I've had my eye on for a little while, and usually when I go with these small form factor builds, I use a Pico power supply. But with those, we have to add a power brick, and this does take up a little more room. But with the A09, we actually have the option to add a flex power supply, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. The A09 wasn't specifically designed to run a dedicated GPU, but we're definitely going to make it work here. If we take a look at the back, we've got a single slot, and it's definitely off-kilter a little bit from other cases. But with the recent release of the single-slot low-profile RX 6400, we can make it work with this unit. And it's actually one of my favorite new GPUs that's hit the market. I know a lot of people, you know, kind of think it's a little overpriced, coming in at $150. But I think it does a good job for what it is, and it's perfect for a super small form factor build like this. And when it comes to the heart of this build, the CPU, we're going to be using the Ryzen 5 5600X. You can go with the 5600 or something lower end if you want to, but with this we've got 6 cores and 12 threads, and it's going to give us plenty of CPU power given the size of this unit. All of the parts used in this build will be linked in the description in case you want to build something like this. But when it comes to that motherboard, we're using the ASRock B550 Mini ITX AC. This is a lower cost B550 board. I personally really like it. We've got one M.2 slot here. Kind of basic because we don't have an extra, but that's really all I need with this build because I'm going with a 2TB Fury M.2 NVMe SSD. RAM's going to be covered by 16GB of DDR4 running at 4400MHz. And to keep this 5600X cool, I'm going to go with a Thermalrite Copper Low Profile 47mm cooler. I have used this in the past. It's one of my favorite little coolers for these small form factor builds. I've replaced the orange fan with a black one just to make it a little more unified. And with this setup, everything fits really nicely. We've got total clearance on the VRM and the RAM with this cooler. That's one of the big reasons I like it. This AO9 case is definitely going to be tight with a dedicated GPU, and I did have to remove this front USB panel here. Just comes right out with two screws. It just makes it a lot easier to get your fully assembled motherboard in here. With it installed, you can still get it in, but it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. You do have to wiggle it around a bit, so I just opted to take it out. But the whole setup sits in here really nicely, and obviously we've got room for that flex power supply. This is what the case was designed to use. But uh, you might be asking yourself, where am I going to put that GPU? And we'll definitely get to that in a second. But so far, everything's fitting together really nicely. The next thing I need to do is install that power supply and get everything wired up. And once that's in, it looks something like this. So I'm still not done with the cable management, but it was definitely tight trying to get all of those cables behind the RAM up there. I did have to remove both of those boards from the case and then reinstall them after I got everything plugged in, but now it's time to tackle the GPU. So like I mentioned, we're going to be using the Radeon RX 6400. This is a low profile single slot card. This is the XFX model, but other manufacturers do make these single slot low profile cards. And with this case, you can see that it's going to sit in here a bit funky. And if you're familiar with the 6400, you know it uses PCIe 4.0. I've seen up to around a 16% decrease in performance when running this card in a 3.0 slot. But this board that I have in this build does have a PCIe 4.0 slot. And the flex cable I'm using to install it in this case is also 4.0, so we should be able to get the maximum performance out of this RX 6400. So we don't have much room in here to put a dedicated GPU, but with a riser cable, it is possible. So we've got this low profile single slot RX 6400. It's actually going to sit right on top here, and with the CPU cooler that I chose to use, it does clear everything. And like I mentioned, the riser cable I chose to use is PCIe 4.0, so we're not going to lose any of that bandwidth from the RX 6400, and we definitely need as much as we can get, because we're already working with a lower-end card. But there is room in here to flex this cable around, and that GPU is going to sit right here. So just go ahead and plug it in, and once everything's attached, it is a bit tricky to get it in. And this is such a light card that I'm actually not going to worry about doing any kind of mounting to the uh, back of the case or anything like that. We've got the single mounting point for all of the I.O. outputs, plus we've got the riser cable which is going to help stabilize it. And once it's all mounted up, it looks something like this. I mean, I think this little thing came out really nice. 
We've got that 300 watt power supply, so we don't need to worry about power delivery to the GPU or the CPU. And I personally really like the look of this case. Now you can mount this vertically or horizontally. I'm gonna go vertical with it. This thing is super tiny. It'd be great for a living room setup. And since we've got that little RX 6400, we could always install SteamOS 3 on here, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. Just works much better with Radeon GPU, so you could have a real console experience. But right now I'm running Windows 11 Pro, and so far everything's been working really well. I've updated all the drivers, got everything ready to go here, got Steam installed with a bunch of games we're going to be testing, and as you can see we've got that Ryzen 5 5600X, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 4400 megahertz. I did turn on the XMP from the BIOS and the Radeon RX 6400. Definitely not the most powerful card in the world, but I'm a huge fan of this little thing, and I want to get right into some gaming. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, no resolution scale, and with these new AMD drivers, I'm on 22.71. This is running better than I've ever seen it running on the RX 6400. I mean, we're getting some really great performance. And we can lock this at 60, turn it up to high settings, and you could run it like that all day but I kept it at medium just to see how high we could go. And it looks really good at medium settings. It's playing just fine. In fact, we got an average of 94 FPS out of this game. Looking really great for this lower end card. So in this video, we're gonna be testing out some more PC games. We're also gonna test out some higher end emulators, but the first thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks. And here's Geekbench 5, single core 1620, multi 7687. Moving over to 3D Mark, Fire Strike, 10,209. And if you take a look at that graphic score, we're up there at around 11,000 with this RX 6400. And finally, Time Spy with a 3,949. It's definitely not going to win any benchmark awards, but I do think we're going to get some really good gaming and emulation performance out of this little setup. And speaking of gaming, let's test out some more. So next on the list, we've got Halo Infinite. We're scaled to 720p, medium settings. And with it set up like this, we're getting an average of 93 FPS. Going into it, I actually wasn't expecting to get over 70 with it. I've tested this on a lot of different setups. But yeah, this is actually pretty impressive. I know we're scaled to 720p, but this will run at 1080p, locked at 60, low settings if you're into that. I still think it looks great here, even though we're scaled down. Here's The Witcher 3, 1080p, high, and given that this is an older game, I figured we'd get a little more out of it, but we only average 74 FPS. And I do want to mention that I have hair works completely off. Now don't get me wrong, this is running just fine, and with a little GPU like this, I would highly recommend turning V-Sync on, but I thought we'd be up there in the 90s at high with this setup. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, we're at 1080p medium settings from the preset, but we have FSR set to quality. So I got really excited about this, given the frame rate we're seeing here, but then I started seeing some dips. So if you have to run this at 1080p medium, you might want to take FSR to performance, or you could just turn V-Sync on to eliminate any kind of screen tearing. Here's Injustice 2, 1080p, very high settings, looking really good. We got a constant 60 here, and when it comes to fighting games on this little GPU and CPU combo, they work out really well. Even something like NK11 at high settings, 1080p, will run at 60 all day. Doom Eternal actually did really well at 1080p medium. We can run this over 60. We got an average of 68. I tried high settings, but since we're kind of limited on the VRAM, we're only working with four gigs here with the RX 6400, we kind of need to leave it at medium. And the final PC game we're going to take a look at before we move over to emulation is God of War. We're at 1080p original settings and FSR is set to performance. With it set up like this, it's a perfectly playable experience. I actually had a pretty decent time playing this, but we only got an average of around 66 FPS out of it. And as for emulation, I've tested the 5600X and the 6400 in the past. This does a really great job. Here we have PS2 using PCSX2 1080p DirectX 11. But when it comes down to it, there are a lot of games that you can play at 1440 and 4K. This little setup also handles original Xbox emulation quite well. There might be a few games you have to switch between emulators. 
But CXBX Reloaded is the one that really seems to work better with Radeon GPUs, and here's DOA3 at 1080p. You want to get some Wii U emulation out of the way with SimU, 1080p is no problem. Even with something like Breath of the Wild at 1080p 60fps using the Vulcan back in, it's going to run it at full speed. And of course, we had to test out some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. We're using the Vulcan back in, 1080p, and I don't have any FSR going on with RPCS3. Skate 3 is running perfectly fine. This is the highest temperatures I saw out of the CPU, and you can see that it's pulling up to 75 watts out of this unit. So overall, I think it came out really nicely. I love these small form factor builds, and we're really limited on these cases and GPUs we can use. The RX 6400 is looked down on by a lot of people, but I personally really do like it for 1080p gaming and even 4K emulation. In the past, I've made a video with the 6400 paired up with the 12900K testing out some emulation. And yeah, I mean, 4K emulation is totally possible on this little GPU. And I personally don't like showing it off, but if you're into Nintendo Switch emulation, this does run Yuzu, just like it sits right here at 1080p. But yeah, this would make a great little 1080p living room setup, and if you're interested in building something similar, I will leave links in the description to everything I use for this build. Hopefully, in the future, we can get a more powerful GPU and a low-profile single-slot form factor, but for now, if you're looking to build a really small form factor PC like this, I could highly recommend the RX 6400. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.